Artificial intelligence is changing the way the world works and is already having an impact on the way that network operators work and how their technology partners plan their portfolios for the future. But just how transformative could AI be on the day-to-day -day telco processes and operations? Well, to find out, I'm talking today with Danielle Rios, aka Telco DR, and acting CEO of disruptive telecom software developer Totogi. Danielle, great to talk with you again. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, let's start by looking at the implications of a recent development at the Swedish buy now, pay later fintech firm Klarna, where the CEO recently announced that the company is not only introducing widespread process automation, but also replacing Salesforce and Workday with its own in-house AI applications. What's your take on this particular development? Well, this was massive news that rocked the enterprise software world, not just in telco specifically, but really in every industry, right? I mean, this is a almost a crazy idea. I mean, Klarna is not a small company. You know, they have about 5,000 people. It's about $1.3 billion in revenue, right? So this isn't a startup with small needs, you know, simple needs. Right? This is a pretty significant company that's decided to replace, you know, stalwarts, known SaaS companies that you know, are not, you know, chunk change in the in the enterprise software world, and they're using AI to, to rewrite it. And so uh, I think it's huge news, uh, if true, and if it actually uh, works. And so I think uh, it's something that telco executives should absolutely be watching to see, you know, how a company can take uh, known uh, commercially available enterprise software and replace it with AI generated code. And so I think it's a very exciting development and uh, really going to be watching to see what happens with Klarna and their move off Salesforce and, and Workday. Okay. Now, of course, uh, you know, Klarna is quite a, a new company. Telco's not so much. And telcos are famous for having tons of legacy enterprise software, most notably for their BSS functions. Yeah. Uh, do you think telecom operators should follow suit and implement the kind of approach that, that Klarna just announced? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something telco execs, especially in the IT space, should be watching, right? Um, Lester Thomas, several years ago, talked about uh, you know, the, the kind of BSS estate that Vodafone has at their over 20 opcos, with every opco running about 180 different BSS vendor modules, homegrown kind of systems. And these systems are known to be, you know, to be highly customized to match the internal processes of a telco and highly integrated with other systems. And so, you know, looking at Klarna and using that as, you know, just pattern matching on what they're doing. If that starts to work and you know AI can really generate code for enterprises to use, this gives telcos exactly what they want. They want a, you know they want a BSS system that matches their internal workflows, ma uh, meets their needs exactly uh, in a way that they get to control it. They get to move it at you know move the the roadmap forward at their own pace and likely do it at ninety percent of the cost. And, you know, when I, I look at all the reports that you put out about BSS um, and that TM Forum does in terms of people really want a modern system, they want it to be cloud native, they all, you know, now they want more AI capabilities, they want it at a reduced cost, they want it really fast. I think AI is really answering a lot of these needs. And, you know, again, I think, I think telco execs, execs should be asking themselves, how do we make this happen for our organization? If Klarna can do it, how can we make that happen as well? Okay. Now, we spoke recently during the TM Forum's DTW Ignite event in Copenhagen, where we talked about Totogi's BSS magic. Is this the kind of role you envisage for BSS magic, helping the telcos to go at their own pace with AI and transform their back offices? Yeah, I think one difference between Klarna and, say, Telco is Klarna is a software company, right? And so, you know, they have those internal capabilities. And clearly, you know, Klarna, there's been several stories that have come out in terms of how AI first they're, they're trying to be. And Telco isn't quite there, right? They're, they're not software shops. You know, certainly they're trying to be. They have big IT groups. And so, 
Um, the idea behind VSS Magic is really how can we add, as Tatogi, a software company, add our uh, expertise to the problem and assist the telcos in getting to this vision. And so the idea is, you know, it's a grand vision. The idea is having business people being able to direct the AI to build the BSS capabilities, um, extract insights, change the interface, inter integrate to new systems. And so the idea of BSS Magic is to assist a business person, not even a technical person, to do these do those things. Now, where we are today with the LLMs, I don't think it's, you know, this vision isn't possible, but... I had uh, a person from Anthropic on the podcast dropping actually today where he talks about um, how the chips are advancing about 3x a year. Um, so that's 9x improvement on the, ch on the chips. The LLMs still have 100x improvement coming our way. And so Tatogi's betting that the LLMs and the ecosystem around the LLMs, the chips, uh, and, and software components continue to improve. We're still in early innings and we're betting on that trajectory. And so we're building a, a piece of software that's riding the jagged edge of the AI capabilities to assist the telcos to be able to build their own BSS system. So we're really excited about this vision. And, you know, every day just, you know, the world's changing with AI and we're just riding the wave and it, it's, it's very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Things are changing so much. I mean, you, if you turn away for, for one week, you actually miss so much of, uh, of what's happening in this sector. Uh, now, you demonstrated BSS Magic at that TM Forum event. Uh, uh, since yeah. Copenhagen, what additional capabilities has the Tatogi team delivered? Yeah, like I said, early innings, and this is, this is a vision that's probably going to take us over the next certainly five years and probably 10 to deliver on. Um, and so we're starting with some basic common patterns that we see around the BSS. And so we see things like uh, new implementations or moving, you know, moving versions from one version to another or swapping systems from an older vision to, to, uh, to a, new, a new BSS vendor. And so that's a lot of data translations and data migration. So that's the first piece that we've tackled is how do you how do you map the different schemas and move data from X system, you know, from the source system to a target system. Um, the next thing that we're tackling is change requests. There's a lot of change requests around BSS. Um, they range from the very simple, build me a new report that I can access so I can get an insight, to the very complex, you know, let's add a schema, let's change the workflow let's introduce the concept of a hierarchy in the, in the data structure. And so we're starting on the easier side of, uh, of the world there. And so we can take a statement of work. This is an English document um, that you load into BSS Magic, and it will give the project manager a work breakdown structure, uh, maybe the beginnings of some code snippets it knows it needs to do, maybe uh, um, something for the database. Um, so little simple things to help plan the work It'll give you an impact analysis of, okay, if you're going to make this change over here in this module, it has these other downstream uh, effects in other areas that you need to think about. And so it's really assisting the human planners and the human workers uh, to design that project and hopefully execute it uh, more successfully, more reliably, and in a shorter period of time. And I think the third thing that we're doing is a lot of times you see these little temporary code snippets that are written around the BSS or during the project, right? Things to make sure you know, the data migrated correctly or run a quick report and, and give us a readout. And so it's generating these small snippets of code um, and test cases so that those project workers can get their work done more quickly. And so we're using it in our own business. If you recall, I, I bought uh, the STL BSS assets about 18 months ago. And so we're using it every day with our own consultants in our own business. And we're seeing our project timelines drop. We're seeing our prices drop and our customers like that. And we're hoping the speed and the reduced price encourages them to do more work um, and, and get familiar with the AI. And so kind of eating our own dog food as all startups do and uh, really excited to kind of see that uh, products start to take shape and our customer, our, our people actually start to use it and our customers start to enjoy it. 
So the industry is buzzing with stories every day about how telcos are applying AI. Uh, for those telcos interested in trying out the capabilities of BSS Magic, how can they get started with Tatogi? I think DM me. I, I'm everywhere. Look for me on Twitter or on LinkedIn. Um, send me an email uh, is, is probably the best way to get started. And we're really looking for those telcos that have started to work with AI and understand the experimental nature of it. I think what really gets organizations going is not the usual, like, here's the product and out of the box, it has everything you wanted. And you, you kind of like walk out of the store, if you will, and start to use it. This is going to be a very iterative experimental process, Right. Um, there was this great uh, paper written by some MIT researchers about a year ago about the jagged technological, uh, technological edge of AI. And like you mentioned previously, it's changing every day. I mean, you wake up every day and a new startup has come out or someone's gotten a ridiculous amount of funding or someone's released a, a demo video. And you really have to, you know, our teams go out, we test it. You know, is this hype? Is this real? Can we use it in our product? Can we use some ideas from this? So I think the telcos that are really using it know that AI is, you know, today it's it's covering about 5% of what you want it to do. Tomorrow it'll be 7, then it'll be 10, then it'll be 12. And it's a very kind of iterative, up and down, not a straight line, not a step function, if you will. And so if that's you, if your organization is totally into this kind of way of working, I think Tatoki is perfect for you. And so the way this is, would work would be you would get drops probably every week and, you know, with release notes and you'd be trying it with your teams and giving us feedback. And so uh, it's very iterative, but that's kind of how AI works, right? Like it's kind of too much to give it to your teams and expect them to like completely change their workflows overnight. And so that's what's been working for us. It's been working with our, our customers at STL. And so if that's you, give me a call. Would love to, to chat with you and share BSS Magic with you. Okay, thanks, Danielle. Great to talk to you as ever and look forward to chatting with you again soon. Can't wait to see you again, Ray. Take care. 